Good afternoon again, brothers and sisters. <laughs> and to our marriage ministry, the yeah. Pillars Bible Talk. Yeah. Today, me and my wife were giving a charge about marvelous discipling or shepherding. Yeah. Okay, let's open our Bible to Hebrews 12, 4 to 11. Okay, say so amen if you're there. Amen. Okay. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shed, shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father, addresses his son? It says, My sons, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Because the Lord is disciplines the one he loves and he's just in everyone he accepts as his son. Endorse hardship as a discipline God is treating us, uh, treating you as, as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not if you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters. That not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had humans, Father, who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much, how much more should we submit to the Father of Spirit in life? They, 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 they discipline us for a little while as they through, thought best. But God is disciplines us for our good and order in order that we may share in His holiness. No, no discipline seems pleasant at the, time, at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Amen. Amen. Wow. What a powerful scriptures right there. First, I would like to thank you, God, for allowing us to share what we learn and what we are still learning about discipling and shepherding. Yeah. And of course, to Paul and Ayumi for giving us the chance to, the chance to give a charge about marvelous discipling for all of us. Yeah. Before I serve the main message for this charge, allow, allow me to share what is discipling or discipline. Disciplings come from the root word of disciple. In Latin, disciple is called discipulus, which means, which means it's a student. But biblically, disciple is called a follower, a follower of God. And I believe almost of us in this room are disciple. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you are not sure, talk to your disciple after this. <laughs> so what is discipline? Discipline is the same a self-control. It also means instruct to obey and to correct. Now, discipline applies to who? Only the brothers or sisters of the disciples? No, discipline is for everyone. Especially for disciplines from God, we're all accountable. As the scripture says in verse 6, because the Lord disciplined the one who the one he loves, and God loves his disciples, his children. Brothers and sisters, let us let us be grateful for discipline. Uh, for discipline. It is free. There is no cost to pay in discipline. But all but all the more discipline brings salvation to each one of us. Amen. It will save us from falling into sin and will save us until we until we come to heaven. Now let's go to our main point. Marvelous discipling. I was really touched by the scriptures I read because I'm also a father of my children. <coughs> and I'm sharing today not only to speak, but for not not only to speak for you, but also to speak to myself. Amen. Amen. Disci dis discipline is very important in our life. Amen. It is essential because if we if we don't have discipline, there there will be distractions. 
Sunday. Sorry. Come on, bro. And if you don't have discipline, we cannot apply discipline to our brothers and sisters. So what is a godly discipline? Godly discipline is, is to study God's word and also God's character. Discipline is learning, training, and applying a system of standards. What are standards? The standards of God from the Bible. So let's check ourselves now. Which standards are we following on? Standards of the people of the standards of God based on the Bible? If you are a discipler, assist yourself now. Are you, are you teaching or discipline your brothers, sisters based from the Bible? Yeah. Or based from your own opinion? Mm. Or, based, or worse, based from your emotion? But this is not only uh, but that is not only to disciples but also all of us disciples assess yourself which is standard are applying in our life right now it's never too late to repent we, we are not perfect we make mistake and God's gracious for for there is repentance but let us know but let us know now take for Granted, because God knows who is true sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Lastly, when discipling, the disciple of disciples, we can only advise, rebuke, teach, and encourage if there are sins or struggles. That is discipling. And after that, it comes to disciplines for us. Because discipline is not something that others, that, that others do for you. It is it, it is something it, it is something you do for yourself. It means discipline is a choice. It's your choice, but not your but, but not your disciples' choice or command. And all and all the more, it is your own personal decision. Yeah. If your decisions to obey or disobey, if your decisions to repent or not to repent. Previous, uh, uh, Proverbs 10, verse 17 in NLT version. People who follow instructions is on the, on the path to life, but the one who rejects corrections goes astray. Let us all, let's all have a marvelous discipling to one another. Now, I have my wife to share with the sisters for the pr practicals. Amen. Amen. Sisters, are you still with us? Amen. Do you still want to hear more about marvelous discipling? Yes. Are you also grateful that you heard the charges from the other brothers and sisters? Because I am. Amen. We should be grateful because that is the marvelous spirit of God that is moving in this room right now. Same with my husband, I am grateful and honored to share a charge about marvelous discipling or shepherding. From the scriptures that my husband have shared, I am most impacted in verse 5 that says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. To me, it simply means let us take God's discipline seriously. Yes very seriously and please allow me to share today if you can relate just say amen and repent now <laughs> was there a time or is there a time in your d times with your discipler that you felt that you're being attacked did you ever feel that your concerns are not being addressed or worst did you think that your disciple doesn't under that your disciple doesn't understand your situation? Does it sound relatable to you? Yes. Here's the thing. Based from my husband's sharing, he shared, he said that in the Bible, discipling is about teaching, advising, rebuking, and training. So, disciples, I hope we are all reminded that our D times 
with our disciple, disciples or discipleship are for those reasons. It is purely teaching, advising, rebuking, training, and don't forget, the times should also be encouraging. I was impacted by what Jera has shared. What is encouragement? Encouragement, it is a power to help others to stay away from their sins. So let us be encouraged in every disciple. This is very clear enough that discipling is a building relationship that we should have. This is to meet the needs of our disciples. What are those needs? The needs to make every right decision in our lives. Again, as what my husband shared, discipline is a choice. And as disciples, our choice is nothing else but to be like God. Our choice should be the same standard like God. From what Kuya Don shared this morning, Jesus is the standard of discipling. And the Bible contains the standards of discipling. Furthermore, about discipling, based from the scriptures on Hebrews 12, 11, it says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. True enough, the discipline from God is not pleasant at times. Rather, it is painful. Then again, let's take it seriously. Because in Proverbs 12, 1, just write this down, no need for you to go there, but it says, Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. But whoever hates correction is stupid. You heard it right. That is a strong word from the Bible right there. Again, the Bible is very intentional. This is not me speaking. It is the Bible. This is how God teaches us and rebukes us whenever we sin and we don't repent. When we are being disciplined and we don't listen, the Bible says we are stupid. But if we listen and we accept discipline, the knowledge of God will shower upon us. God will serve us rightfully and just. Not more, not less, but just the exact amount that we deserve. So here's my encouragement for us about discipling. And this is not only to leaders or disciples, but also to all of us disciples and aspiring disciples. Amen? Amen. First, for us to have a better discipling relationship, we should consider making a character study with our disciples, brothers, or sisters. For this little effort, we will know what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and most importantly, what are their needs in their life and their personal walk with God? We will know our needs to strengthen our faith. We will know how can be of help to deal with the struggles and challenges of our brothers and sisters. Discipling is essential. It is one of our core convictions in our movement. Hence, let's apply it in our life and in our relationship with one another. We are responsible to take care of one another. Of course, I just want to lift up my husband. I am grateful that every time I stumble, I have my husband who will rebuke me, resent me, and disciple me. But at the end of it, he will be there to pray with me. I love you and I respect you and thank you for being my disciple. <laughs> And also to my discipling family tree, <laughs> Paul and Naomi, Kuya Ban Ban, and Rachel, and also Bong Pana, thank you so much. I am grateful for you and for all the discipling I've learned. <laughs> Lastly, to all of us, I want to resonate what my husband shared about. Discipl discipline is not something others will do to you. It is something you do for yourself. Amen. So sisters, let us be disciplined. Starting from ourselves, not from someone else. Yes. My husband and I have some practicals that we want us to remember and apply in our discipleship. 
Number one, if you want to be heard, be kind with your words. If you want to be imitated, be an example to be followed. If you want to be disciplined, be humble to accept and repent. If you want to be resolved, be righteous to walk straight with your paths. Finally, here are some scriptures that we can meditate about our attitude towards discipling. Just take note of it. Proverbs 12, 15. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Proverbs 13, verse 1 in NLT version. A wise child accepts a parent's discipline. A mocker refuses to listen to correction. Proverbs 19, 20. Get all the advice and an and instructions you can so you will be wise for the rest of your life thank you for letting me share let us have a marvel marvelous discipling to one another i love you all and to god be all the glory wow thank you amazing wife brothers and sisters today is the is the year that will make sure that the marvelous miracles of god will live in us Let's take a scriptures and list and listen into our hearts to build a marvelous discipling to one another. Marvelous discipling builds in a marvelous relationships, and a marvelous relationships builds God's kingdom even more stronger. Wow. Thank you for letting us share, and to God be all the glory. Amen.